Hello, my name is Megan. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the different things that I did to remain productive last academic term and how I managed to get a distinction in my master's exams despite being quite a busy bee. To start off with, I'm slightly burnt. I don't know if you can see under here. Um, yeah, it's, it's a hot day in March and I underestimated how hot it was. My shins are also slightly red. But we'll move with it. I've put some after sun on. We're, we're doing well. So the plan of the video is I'm going to be talking through the different things I had going on in my life and ways that I found um, to manage my time for each of the areas. And then at the end, I'm going to be mentioning some general productivity tips that helped me. Just to mention at the beginning of the video, you essentially need to find out what works best for you. So these methods personally worked really well for me but that may not work well for other people. And I also think there's this culture in sort of study platforms of this toxic productivity that you must be productive all the time, you must be busy all the time. Actually, as long as you get the work done, it doesn't matter what time you do it in. If you've got a lot of things to do, then planning ahead is really helpful, but actually you just need to follow what works for you so that you're less likely to burn out and you've got those times away from the desk so that you can come back refreshed and ready to go. So this period was the first semester of this current academic year, so starting in September 2021 and going through to January of this year, 2022, when I had my master's exams. The different areas of my life that I had is work. So I work as a first and second year university tutor at the local medical school. I was also doing a master's in sports and exercise medicine at Leeds University. I was following a health and fitness plan as well at the time. I also had church things going on. I was doing some stuff on YouTube and then I'm gonna talk about sort of social life things as well. So starting off with my job, I currently work 30 hours a week at the medical school. I have two groups of first years and a group of second year students. So time wise, this works out that I work all day Mondays and Thursdays, half day Tuesdays and Fridays, and then there's preparation time and essay marking, things like that around it. How I manage my time with this is the year is split up in two different blocks. I started taking notes on my iPad about a year and a half ago. So some of the notes I had from last academic year, I could use this academic year. But at the beginning of each block, I made sure to go through all the PBL, so the problem-based learning cases for that block, and all the clinical skills work for that block as well. That would involve, for PBL, reading through the case, looking through the learning outcomes, making sure I've got the right pointers for specific bits that I'm wanting the students to pick up in the cases. And then clinical skills was a mixture of examination practice, so physical examination. So for this, I'd make PDFs of the different skills so that I knew what I was teaching and the students knew what I was teaching and it was based off the curriculum. And then also with clinical skills, we have communication skills. So this would involve looking through the pre-reading, reading papers for it, and looking through the script that the simulated patient would be working from so that I knew what was likely to come up. We also have something called Open Campus, which is a reflective portfolio platform that the students reflect on weekly from the clinical skills sessions. So I needed to make time each week to do that. And I also made sure that the students knew exactly how to contact me. So we don't have the students' phone numbers, but we use Microsoft Teams. I have it downloaded as an app on my phone so they can contact me and it'll come through as an instant message or they can send me an email. So I was physically teaching for 24 hours a week and then I had the prep time on top. So I had the um, prep in the PBL and the skills, doing the open campus work, contacting any students that I needed to, having meetings with students if I needed to, filling in paperwork. So altogether, that was about 30 hours a week that I gave myself for that. I then had my masters. So this was on a Wednesday. One of the reasons that I applied to this master's in Leeds was the teaching days were Wednesdays and that was a day that I wasn't teaching medical students. The teaching for Leeds was a mixture of on-campus teaching and online teaching. The days that we had on-campus teaching, I would get the train to Leeds and that would give me time to do work on the train. I could look over any last minute anatomy information 
so that I could apply it when we're in the anatomy lab. I also went through the workbooks that Leeds gave us as well and went through any final answers on the train. At the beginning of the course, I made sure to look at the module outlines. So these are like the learning outcomes. It's not in great detail, it's more of an overview of the learning outcomes because of it being at a postgraduate level, it's a lot more self-directed. But I made sure to look over what it was that was expected of me at the beginning of the term for each module so that I knew what I was aiming at. I then went through all the different assessments. So we had things like group poster presentations, we had individual presentations, we had essays. So I went through, made a table on my notion, which I'll come back to a bit later, and it had which module it was for, what percentage weighting it had when it was due in. I also took my notes on notion. I made a, a sub page for the semester and then for each condition that we had, each sports medicine condition we had, it had a different page on notion. So it had things like the epidemiology, the underlying anatomy, how it might present, how it might be treated, looking at physiotherapy um, compared to surgical treatments. The masters that I was doing is part time but it's not part-time equally over two years. It is full-time for a term, then you have a year off, and then it's full-time for another two terms. So you're essentially full-time for that term. So doing a master's or degree is, it takes up about 40 hours a week. We'd have the teaching in person or online on the Wednesday, and then we'd have quite a bit of work to do outside of university. Different people did different amounts of work. I was really keen to get a higher mark because I want to apply for sports medicine training and it's quite competitive so I thought if I have a higher mark in the masters it will help boost my application. So with the university teaching and the masters that came to about 70 hours a week which is a lot of time, is a lot of time if I'm honest. Moving on to health and fitness, I got a coach in September so the end of September when we got back from Ibiza I started with a coach. I'd been injured so I had a broken foot, I'd not been able to run properly for about a year, maybe just under a year, but at the time I got the coach. Um, so I had gained weight because I normally do a lot of exercise and therefore I normally eat quite a lot. So I got a coach um, because I wanted to build up my strength to hopefully prevent any more fractures and also to lose some weight as well so that when I could go back to running it would be easier. I did manage to lose quite a bit of weight which was, which was good because there was quite a lot of effort put in and I was doing between three and four workouts a week. So my coach programmed in um, the workouts on the Trainerize app that we used. So I'd just open up the app, go through the workouts and enter in my, the weights that I did for each rep. It'd tell you when to start and stop again. And with having the between three and four strength workouts a week, I joined the university gym where I teach. So when I was doing a full day teaching, I'd use my lunch hour to go to the gym. So that would be two workouts a week that I would be able to fit in during my working day. And then I'd try to fit in the other workouts at the weekend or after the teaching that I did on Tuesdays and Fridays. I wasn't doing much cardio at all at this time because I had a broken foot. When I was in an air boot, I was able to cycle, but once I was in a cast, I couldn't really cycle. So cardio was minimal, but I'm managing to build that up again now. And I can, I can run 5K again, which is, Brilliant for everyone around me, let me tell you. Along with the various workouts, I also had a meal plan to follow. So when I joined my coach, there was an option of calorie counting or meal planning. I, was, I went for a meal plan because I just wanted something a bit more structured. So once a week, once every two weeks, I would do a batch lot of cooking and um, freeze it all in portions so that I could just take it and, and go. And things like having breakfast, I'd prepare the night before, like overnight oats. I would eat it when I got to work or I'd eat it on the train on the way to Leeds. So it was all prepped out for me so I didn't have to take that much time away from anything else to do meal prepping. Moving on to church, so I'm a Christian, I go to church regularly. So the church services are once a week. I used to go to church on Sunday morning with my parents, then go to their house afterwards for a Sunday dinner, which is always ideal. And I also had a weekly Bible study group, so we did an overview of the Bible with the vicar at the church. Since then, that is now finished. I'm now listening to a Bible in one year. So you read through the Bible in one year, but it's audible so you can listen to it when you're driving and it gives a commentary as well. I'll put a link in the description box below for the one that I'm using. It is free and I'm on day 32 now, I think of that. And it's a really nice way to fit it into your everyday because you can listen to it on your commute. I was listening to it at the gym this morning. So that's a really good way to, if you're wanting to get that sort of thing in your life, to get it in every day. I was then posting on YouTube as well. 
about once every other week I was posting on YouTube. I didn't really see this as extra work because I quite like it as a creative outlet. I wanted to post every week but I just physically didn't have time to come up with the ideas, film the content and also my life wasn't really that exciting because I was just working quite a lot but I did like it as a creative outlet and I feel when I'm sat down editing that I'm not easily disturbed so that worked well for me. I also have a topic called social life. I didn't really have a social life essentially. This is how I managed to get everything into the week and do well in my exams. I didn't really socialise so it wouldn't be compatible for me long term at all. Next time when I go back to doing the masters I'll be teaching less at the university so I won't have the full on weeks again. But I only went away one weekend I think in the time that I was doing these long weeks which is unlike me. I sort of zip about you know restrictions allowing quite a lot to see different people so only going away one weekend was really quite rare for me. Those were the different areas that I worked through and sort of budgeted time for so I'm going to talk about the ways that I like general ways that I worked out how I was going to spend my time how to put time in different places. My first general plan is to plan ahead. Over the summer I knew that I was going to have a busy first term so I did things like read up on study methods. So I read Unjaded Jade's The Only Study Guide You'll Ever Need book, which was really useful because it gave advice on different study methods and the um, ones that had scientific proof behind it as well. So things like active recall, spaced repetition. So based on that, I would then try and work out how I was going to integrate that into my working. So I've been using Quizlet flashcards. I've been using Anki to get that active recall and also the spaced repetition as well that comes with those apps. I also spent quite a bit of time working out how to use Notion. A lot of YouTubers have spoken about Notion, a lot of people I follow speak about Notion and I just found it a really useful platform to use for planning my time. I would take my notes on Notion, I'd have all the information about the assessments on Notion, I'd have information about my um, health and fitness on Notion, I'd plan my YouTube on there. So I just found it really useful to have sort of a tab for each section of my life and then I could work through it on Notion, use tick boxes, things like that to work through my plans. So going into Notion, I I personally have a big calendar on my wall that takes up the majority of my wall. The big calendar on my wall is an annual one. I've then got a wall calendar that is a monthly one so it gives it a bit more detail and then I also have a weekly calendar plan as well just to give breakdown day by day. This would normally take about half an hour to set up each week alongside my Notion weekly planner. So on Notion I would make a weekly template that would put in the different days of the week and different recurring tasks that I had to do like the different my sister's just come bear with bear with on my weekly notion template I would have preset things that I had to do every week for example marking the open campus doing the different workouts each week cleaning different bits of my house things like that and then I would have the each day set out bullet points for things that I was doing that day and then tick boxes below that so I could tick off when I'd done the different things Throughout the annual, the monthly, weekly and Notion calendars, I would have a colour scheme going on. So I'm personally a very visual learner, so I would have different colours for different things. So university is red, Leeds is green, fitness is orange, church is blue, YouTube is pink, and then any life admin things is purple. And these are just themes that run through all of my different areas of life so that I can easily see on a calendar what I've got and when. For when I was physically doing the work, two things really, really helped me. The first thing that probably helped me more than anything is really simple, putting my phone on do not disturb. So this means that my phone wasn't buzzing every time I got a WhatsApp message, every time I got an email, an Instagram like, comment, message, um, a Teams message. So I have it set that in, on my do not disturb if someone rings me it will come through so if someone needs to talk to me it will come through but it just meant that I wasn't distracted by my phone I also now have a whatsapp setting so apple have made it where you can have different profiles so I have a setting where whatsapp messages will come through text messages will come through because my dad doesn't have whatsapp he texts and phone calls will come through that's what I have on most of the time but if I'm needing to work I will put that do not disturb on and then I also use the forest app so you decide how long you want to study for you plant a tree and the tree grows over that time if you lift your phone up to look at something then the tree dies I just like little trees I like to create a forest so that personally worked for me 
Thank you very much for joining me for this YouTube video. I hope that you got something out of it and that there's some tips you can pick up and seeing how you can fit it into your life. As I said at the beginning, it very much depends on what works for you and doing more isn't necessarily always good. It's the quality of work that you do. So if you feel you're getting burnt out, make time for that exercise, make time for that um, space away from your desk so that you're able to carry on in a more productive way. What a wonderful